Chapter 6 So King Darius issued orders that a search be made in the Babylonian archives, where treasures were stored. But it was at the fortress of Ecbatana, in the province of Medea, that a scroll was found. This is what it said. Memorandum. In the first year of King Cyrus's reign, a decree was sent out concerning the temple of God at Jerusalem. It must be rebuilt on the site where Jews used to offer their sacrifices, retaining the original foundations. Its height will be ninety feet, and its width will be ninety feet. Every three layers of specially prepared stones will be topped by a layer of timber. All expenses will be paid by the royal treasury. And the gold and silver utensils which were taken to Babylon by Nebuchadnezzar from the temple of God in Jerusalem will be taken back to Jerusalem and put into God's temple as they were before. So King Darius sent this message. To Tatanai, governor of the provinces west of the Euphrates River, to Shethar Bozanai, and to your colleagues and other officials west of the Euphrates. Stay away from there. Do not disturb the construction of the temple of God. Let it be rebuilt on its former site, and do not hinder the governor of Judah and the leaders of the Jews in their work. Moreover, I hereby decree that you are to help these leaders of the Jews as they rebuild this temple of God. You must pay the full construction costs without delay from my taxes collected in your province, so that the work will not be discontinued." Give the priests in Jerusalem whatever is needed in the way of young bulls, rams, and lambs for the burnt offerings presented to the God of heaven. And without fail, provide them with the wheat, salt, wine, and olive oil that they need each day. Then they will be able to offer acceptable sacrifices to the God of heaven and pray for me and my sons. Those who violate this decree in any way will have a beam pulled from their house. Then they will be tied to it and flogged, and their house will be reduced to a pile of rubble. May the God who has chosen the city of Jerusalem as the place to honor his name destroy any king or nation that violates this command and destroys this temple. I, Darius, have issued this decree. Let it be obeyed with all diligence. Tatanai, governor of the province west of the Euphrates River, and Shethar Bozanai and their colleagues complied at once with the command of King Darius. So the Jewish leaders continued their work, and they were greatly encouraged by the preaching of the prophets Haggai and Zechariah son of Edo. The temple was finally finished, as had been commanded by the God of Israel, and decreed by Cyrus, Darius, and Artaxerxes, the kings of Persia. The temple was completed on March 12th, during the sixth year of King Darius's reign. The temple of God was then dedicated with great joy by the people of Israel, the priests, the Levites, and the rest of the people who had returned from exile. During the dedication ceremony for the temple of God, one hundred young bulls, two hundred rams, and four hundred lambs were sacrificed, and twelve male goats were presented as a sin offering for the twelve tribes of Israel. Then the priests and Levites were divided into their various divisions to serve at the temple of God in Jerusalem, following all the instructions recorded in the book of Moses. On April 21st, the returned exiles celebrated Passover. The priests and Levites had purified themselves and were ceremonially clean. So they slaughtered the Passover lamb for all the returned exiles, for the other priests, and for themselves. The Passover meal was eaten by the people of Israel who had returned from exile, and by the others in the land who had turned from their immoral customs to worship the Lord, the God of Israel. They ate the Passover meal and celebrated the festival of unleavened bread for seven days. There was great joy throughout the land because the Lord had changed the attitude of the king of Assyria toward them, so that he helped them to rebuild the temple of God, the God of Israel.